Hey guys, Holly here and I am with Dr. Elaine Norton and you are up to week three of the WBFF World Contest Prep Series. I told you it was geometric. Next time it'll just be one take. Oh, I hope so, I think it better. So yes, uh, it is week three. Um, today, well this week I was actually a little bit nervous because I thought, I thought that I wasn't doing it as well. I was pretty grouchy on Sunday because I thought- Yeah, you were like, I haven't changed at all. And then the next day you're like, oh, <laughs> I I've like, changed exactly what I predicted I would change. Flooding around the house a little bit happier, I think after actually taking my weight. This week we have had a super busy week. We had Zach, the flexible diet and lifestyle uh, in town. So he came kind of hung out with us for the weekend. Um, so we were super- You had Aria come in. Yeah, I had one of my friends, Aria, or a client of Lane's and friend of mine come down from Gainesville, uh, so that was really fun, but that kept us really busy. So from, must have been Saturday, we kind of were out of town, we went out, we went out well, of town. Well, Friday was busy. What was Friday? Oh, okay. I thought you actually <laughs> didn't remember and I was just gonna be like. <laughs> we got engaged on Friday. <laughs> yeah, that was very busy. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Immediately I'm, all the men just shut this video off right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work out. So I must not have taken my weight a few days this week. So, um, well, you didn't take it on Saturday. Definitely didn't take it on Saturday because we were so busy. We got up in the morning, we had the podcast oh, yeah. and we went down to Clearwater. Yeah. So then you didn't take it Sunday. Yeah. So, so I, I, I stayed over the night, um, in Clearwater and I didn't get to take my weight. And we went, I went and trained with Aria in the morning on Sunday. And um, I just remember looking at myself in the mirror, a bad decision. I was just like, ugh, I don't look very good at the moment. And I didn't get to take my weight. So I was feeling very apprehensive about getting on the scales on Monday morning. But I guess when you start to logic through this, I had a really high calorie day on Friday um, because we kind of had unexpected. Right? And you had more than you meant, thought you did on Saturday because yeah, you didn't I, track it correctly. I accidentally, um, logged some of the calories incorrectly in my tracking app. So I created a recipe. So Zach and I were making these Easter muffins and I put all the macros in correctly, but the, I'd accidentally tapped um, kilojoules instead of calories. So um, it was logging like a really low amount of calories. <laughs> and I had a couple of those and I was looking at calories. One calorie is about four kilojoules. Yeah, for those so of you it was out there four who... times less than what I'd actually had. Mm. So yeah, I was probably a little heavy on Sunday morning, which is, uh, kind of gave, gave justice to why I felt that way, but all is good. <laughs> I actually lost the perfect amount of weight in the last three weeks. So you guys know I was trending for about 0.6 kilograms uh, every week for the first three weeks of dieting and I got on the scales on Monday morning and I was 67.3. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was perfect. Feeling better now? I am feeling better, although I, today's back on diet break and my weight's up a little bit, but. You weight's up because you were Yeah, you I were screwed over. up my calories, yeah. So that was this week. What were my targets? I had high targets, you don't know, do you? What, for your diet break? Uh, no, 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 for my past week. I think it was 155 protein, 128 carb, no, 121 carb and 44 fat. Something like that. It's Check my math. It was difficult. It was really difficult. And then I had one high day uh, where I was doing uh, 155 protein, 220 carbohydrate and 70 fat from my one high day. And I think that averages my calories out to be about 15 something per 15, week. 1550. Yeah. This week's a diet break. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about why we do diet breaks or do we feel like we've covered that enough? Uh, people might be new. So there's uh, some new data out there that if you utilize diet breaks, you can increase fat loss efficiency, meaning that per week dieted, you lose more fat. Uh, there was a study done at the University of Tasmania where they did two weeks of dieting followed by a two week diet break. This now is... diet break does not mean YOLO. No. Diet break means you eat at maintenance. Mm -hmm. So um, now we don't do it the exact way that is, was done by the University of Tasmania instead of doing two and two, because that makes for an extremely long overall diet. 
we're doing three weeks and one week of diet break. Mm -hmm. so, so I effectively get a little bit more time in a deficit, therefore hopefully greater, greater loss over yeah. the, the time that we do have. That's uh, ideally, I would like that more to be like two and one. Mm -hmm. I, I've gotten a lot of good success with two weeks dieting, one week break. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of reasons for doing it that way, one of which is the, the study, case study, study with design. University of Florida, or sorry, yeah. University of South Florida. And then also, she just wants to make sure she gets lean enough. So, um, yeah, but so this, is, this week's going to be a diet break. So she's going to eat at maintenance, which is about 2,000 calories. Yep. And, um, yeah, so she gets a little bit of a break, a little mental break. And although she's weird, she doesn't like diet breaks. She would just rather no, keep No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But I think um, the benefits really start to become apparent when you get further into the diet. So the deficit's more difficult. Yeah. You're calorie restricted. It's like by the, the three weeks comes around and it's like, thank God, I get to have a diet break because yeah. mentally, like the psychological restraint that you have to put yourself through um, towards the end of a, a prep is, is really difficult. If you've done it yourself, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, yeah, that's one. And of there them. is evidence that the further into prep you get, the more beneficial diet breaks become, but it's just more of the fact that can you accommodate one week of not making fat loss progress so that you can make more progress mm -hmm. with, at the times you're dieting. But if you're, say, four weeks out and you need to lose five kilos, well, you probably can't do a diet break yeah. because you need all those four weeks just to focus on being in a diet. Yeah, deficit. and it's, it's very circumstantial. I mean, what happens, you can't always perfectly plan your diet either. So, you know, you might have a couple of weeks where you're really stuffed up um, and that might mean that it comes at the expense of being able to get that diet break. So you're gonna have to- Yeah, if you're under a time crunch, if you're just trying to lose fat just to lose fat, then you can be a little bit more liberal with diet breaks and that sort of thing, but um, mm -hmm. in prep, you're confined to the time period that you choose, so. So, I think uh, one of the questions that we are often asked about uh, is how do you recalculate your uh, maintenance calories or your diet break calories? Um, That's a good point because you're supposed to, you're not using the maintenance that you had at the beginning of your diet because mm, it changes. Oft, that's often asked. It's like, oh, right. hey, Holly, so uh, I'm you know, six weeks into my diet. I, I think I should take a diet break, and now I've just learned about this. Should I start adding them to my diet? Yes, most definitely. But then people would say, well, do I go back to what I started at? No. Obviously, over the course of the diet, you're going to have metabolic adaptation, um, especially the longer you've been dieting <laughs> <Obviously>. for. <laughs> <laughs> the, the longer you've been dieting for, the greater that adaptation is going to be. And you've also got to consider that you're probably losing weight and uh, mass during that mm -hmm. time too. So your energy requirements are no longer going to be the same. So mm -hmm. um, we actually determined this. Um, we did two methods of calculation uh, to recalculate what mine And they were really was. close together. They were. It was like a 50 calorie difference, wasn't no, it? No, it wasn't even a 50 calorie was difference. It? it was like a 10 calorie difference or a 20 calorie difference. It was very similar. Yeah. So the way you can do it is you either use what we uh, the Mueller equation and then kind of a we have our own customized formula that we use to mm -hmm. kind of put things through that, uh, or you can look at okay how much weight did I lose over how many days I dieted, mm -hmm. and from there you can determine what your daily average deficit was mm -hmm. because every uh, the amount of weight you lose has a caloric value associated with that. Mm -hmm. Again, now it, it depends. When you start off, the, Kevin Hall has shown this, that if you're very overweight or obese, you actually lose almost 100% fat. As you get leaner and leaner, you start to lose more lean body mass mm, we compared have that, to fat. We have that uh, equation and breakdown in the book. So if you haven't got the books yet, go and, uh, go and check it out. They're going to be in the description yeah, for you. Yeah, talk about that in fat loss forever. So... Do you, um, do you feel like it would be beneficial to actually... I'm Right now, I'm a visual person, guys, if you haven't noticed. Like, I... Yeah, I'm seeing like the math equations happening in my head right now. I would love to do this on the whiteboard because I know the exact steps that we did to do this and I think that the viewers would probably value that. Do you want to do it or do you want to talk about it? I feel like now that you've asked, we kind of have to do it. Damn it. Damn it. You know, I'm going to do a separate video. I'm going to do a separate video and show you guys exactly how I did the math for my um, rate of loss and what I did to calculate my uh, maintenance calories <laughs> in a separate vid. Um, but do you want to go and have a look at my data for the week? Yes, let's go look at the data. Let's do it. Alrighty, looking at so my... you changed it to do that purposely. <laughs> <laughs> calories for the week. Lane was just giving me shit because I apparently always start the book, start this with, okay. <laughs> it's like little John, okay. <laughs> so we'll change it up. Uh, my calories this week, um, 
I had my five low day targets again at 14.92 and then I had one high day uh, which is at uh, 21.30. So my overall weekly compliance or target is 15.83. And what did I get? 16.05. So uh, I'm a little bit over um, 20 calories, 20 calories about what I should The compliance been. to calories is incorrect. We've been over this, remember? Yeah, but some people aren't watching it for the first time. Okay, I'm this week. Oh, no, I don't need to this week because I'm on seven, seven days of the same macros. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you are new. Um, I actually have another table, which I'm going to show you because... It probably doesn't make sense if I just try and verbalize what I'm trying to trying to say. Um, it show it throws off my my uh, compliance because I have one high day, so it looks at all my compliance days. She basically it, needs another table for her high days. This, this one right here. So you're looking at the screen right now. You can see if I had two high days and five low days, it gives me compliance to both of those as a percentage rather than combining them. Does that make sense? I will do that in future just so that no one else is confused. But it basically means that <laughs> because it's looking, this, this is compliance to low days basically. Because you have a high day, yes. it always means you're going to be over. Right. So, yeah. But that high day is planned. So, it is, it's concluded. So, um,. My protein was a little bit all over the place this week. Uh, it's always over. I'm generally always over because I like protein. Uh, you can see I had a couple of days. Oh, I can't wait to put this next week up. I had a really high protein day. Uh, 175 was kind of really over. 167 is also really over. Uh, but overall, my average was at 159, so that's pretty good. Um, my carbohydrates, um, I'm pretty consistent through the week here. I'm within that five gram range, which I try and stick to. So 136, a little over, 127, 124. Don't know what happened here. Must have been, oh, a lot of alcohol was consumed on a Friday. That was uh, the day we got engaged. So I think that's, that's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're, you also, your activity is much different than usual. You didn't do any hit this week and you did a lot of low intensity. Was there a reason for that? Also, only you didn't get your full weights in. Yeah, so I'm really all over uh, all over sorts with my exercise this week. So I didn't do it intentionally. I just I was so sore um, during the middle of the week that I just needed to take a day off. I think this is actually around the wrong way. That Wednesday, this day here, it was actually the day that I took off. Uh, because I'm pulling up sore from this change in training style. Mm -hmm. Did you find that after your powerlifting meet? Yeah, I was pretty sore. Did you like, and then going, we went to higher rep ranges. Yeah, I was pretty sore. The DOMS is ridiculous. Like, I rarely take time off if I'm, I'm pretty tolerant. DOMS is delayed onset muscle soreness, if anybody's wondering. Yeah. Um, I normally don't take time off from just being sore because your body kind of is used to being beat up when you're lifting weights a lot. But this, I was like, yeah, I'm taking day off today. <laughs> So, yeah, consequently, um, we were just busy too. yeah, then we had guests in flying in, obviously Zach was in town and I just didn't have the chance to train. You were day. trying to plan 87 things the day I was trying to propose to you. That was fun. <laughs> Sorry I, had to, about that. I had to be texting, uh, Chino's behind the camera. Shout out to Chino for helping me deal with that <laughs> because the, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> we were having to text like 18 different people and tell them don't agree to anything that Holly plans on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I had to go so far as to contact her hairdresser and made sure she was out of her hair appointment on time. Yeah. So well, that was fun Thanks for, for me. keeping me in line, guys. <laughs> yeah, and you're welcome. So... I couldn't get mad. Did you notice, like, a, just a side note, did you notice, like, uh, like, a week before that, I got really flustered one night when you said that you had something planned all day Friday the next week? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. that was why I was flustered. I figured. Oh, uh, okay. I figured you had something going on. Hmm. Um... So, yeah, this week was just a bit of a mess with my training. But you know what? The good thing was, if we look at my weight, uh, despite the inactivity as so far as like my weights training volumes and I didn't get hit, which is usually a lot more calorically uh, expending than my lists uh, or low intensity steady state training, um, my weight still did come down. So mm. yeah, you can see it was like 67.8, drops down to 67.3. And then again, I hit that same number again um, on Sunday, even though... Um, yeah, even though I thought that I had had a higher calorie day. But um, yeah, that means that my average weekly weight is at 67.6. 67 
Um, and I am perfectly on track. So we've already preset, well, we've been in kind of did the math for my diet break and my current maintenance calories are 2023. So I'm going to be going 200 grams of carbs all week this week. Yes, yes, yes. 67 grams of fat, um, which is just so much more relaxing. I can actually go and have sushi and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I love sushi. I could live on Japanese with my life. Like that, if I was told the last food you have to eat is Japanese, I would be just like, oh, wow, that's such a sad day. <laughs> Wait, you mean like your last meal? Yeah, I would love it. Or forever. If someone it's said you have to morbid. eat, if you have to eat sushi for the rest of your life from here on in, I would not be unhappy. Hmm. Would, would you? Probably. I would oh. like to have other things. There's so many types of sushi and sashimi. I just can't get enough of it. Anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's about all we really need to chat about this week. Hopefully my training gets back on track. I'm just going to be targeting five weights as per normal, 45 hit, and uh, I think it's 150 less this week. So nothing changing here. Next week, though, when we start my diet, I'll probably add in a little bit more um, exercise just so I don't have to be so aggressive with my calories just to keep, help create that deficit. Um, anything else to add, Doc? Like our stuff, share our stuff, buy our stuff. We'll catch you next week. Thank you for watching.